The program I wrote today, you can uh, thank a, a student somewhere in the world who sent me an email who had a problem with uh, a teacher that gave her an assignment that she couldn't figure out how to do. She or he, I'm not sure which. I'll just keep calling her she, and if it was a man, sorry about that. But basically the problem involved uh, saving student data into an array of structures and a memory object. <clears throat> and he, the instructor said to use a specific class named student, which I right away screwed up because I think I called it student info. And then to create an appropriate GUI to enter the student ID number, the student's first and last name, the day, month, and year of his birth and an average mark and there's various criteria for the data that the ID number had to be a positive number the average mark had to be between 0 and 100 and the date of birth had to be a valid date so uh, I wrote this test program basically to uh, figure out how to solve the students problem and then I realized when I'd finished writing it that I'd not just given them hints as to how to solve the problem or her, but I'd, it was the whole answer. I mean, you could essentially just give the teacher this program and you'd have done the assignment. So I, I had to contact them and say that I didn't think it'd be ethical to just give them the program. So uh, I suggested that she look at my uh, video 97, which covers a lot of the concepts that I used in the program but doesn't actually totally give the answer. And then after I looked at the program I decided to make it the first of three videos on serialization because uh, serialization is basically creating a memory structure and then turning it into uh, bits and binary data and saving it on a disk. So phase one of this process, of course, is getting the data from the user and into memory, which essentially is this program. Well, this is the form I created to uh, solve the problem. It has a display, multi-line text box, to actually display the data that's in memory. And then for the input, I have a group box that says enter student info and the four fields that were described by the teacher the student ID, the student name, the date of birth, and the average mark. And essentially there's only two buttons that initiate any action in this program. The save student info and the display student info. So if we look at the code behind for save student info, I essentially have an event handler with four local variables that correspond to the four fields an int for the student number, a string for the student name, a date time for the date of birth, and an int for the average mark. And most of this uh, event handler is checking for error conditions that the teacher described. One that he actually didn't describe is the first thing I do is check to see that none of the fields are empty. So I basically have a series of ORs that says if the uh, average mark text box is empty or the date of birth text box is empty or the student ID text box is empty or the student name text box is empty if any of these conditions exist just pop up a message box that says all fields must be filled in and then do a return so it doesn't save any data or try to save any data Next, I just copy the student name text box into the uh, student name local variable since they're both string, no translation is required. And then I have a try catch block, which actually covers a lot of the uh, form validation because I have the student number with a convert to int32 of the student ID text box. And if this fails, the try will fail and we'll go into the catch part of the try catch blocks and it'll pick up the exception that the system had trying to do this convert and then show this as a message in a message box 
So this will actually do a lot of form elevation for us and come up with a message for us. And I have the same thing with the date time where I do a date time dot parse of the uh, date of birth uh, text box. And if this fails, we'll get a different message in this exception text box. And also a convert to M32 of the average mark. But of course there's specific criteria for the student number and the average mark that go beyond whether they're just integers. So we have to check whether the student number is positive according to the teacher's instruction and whether the um, average mark is less than or equal to 100 or greater than or equal to 0. And if all these conditions apply I uh, have a local variable of student info type that I instantiate with a new student info structure and I pass this the value of each of these local variables that have been read in from the text box. So I'm calling the constructor in order to create the object. And then I'm doing a student record dot add of the object. And the student record is a global variable that's a list of student info type and student record of uh, essentially an empty list that we can now add records to that are of student info type. And if we look at what a student info type is, this is the class that he says needs to be created independently of the main class. And it's essentially four fields, a student number that's an int, a student name that's a string, a date time that's date of birth, and a integer that's the average mark. And then we have a constructor for this class. And the parameters for the constructor each begin with an underscore. So that distinguishes them from the uh, actual data members. And then within the constructor, we, decide, we assign these parameters to each of the data members so that when this initially gets allocated, it becomes populated with the data that was given to us by the user. So if we once again look at the event handler for this button, this code makes a lot more sense. We're instantiating a student info object and populating it with the constructor, with the variables that we got from the user, and then we're adding it to the global uh, list of collections of student info type. And then we increment a global student records number, which the main use of this number really is to give the user feedback that the record's been saved. And we assign a text field of a student record number uh, to the number that we just incremented converted to a string. And then in order to make this more user friendly we clear out all the text boxes because we've now saved the data and we put the focus of the cursor on the first field so the user is ready to type in the next record which uh, is a lot more pleasant than having to delete the contents of the fields he typed in previously. But this whole save thing is based on the conditions being met. The student number being positive and the average mark being between 0 and 100. If this doesn't happen, we have an else if that checks if the student number is less than 0. And if that's the case, we pop up a message box that says invalid student number. And if both of these conditions don't apply, we have an else which by elimination would have to mean that the average mark is not between 0 and 100. So we pop up a message box that says invalid average mark. So if we compile and run this and say type in uh, minus 5 for the student number and well before we do this actually why don't I close this and we can go in and select all this clear and focus code and do a control E C to comment it out because this will make it easier to test it if we don't do that 
it won't be user friendly but it'll be tester friendly so let's compile and run this and I put in a student ID of say minus four and a student name of uh, Fred Mertz and a date of birth of uh, 1 2 34 which is a valid date and an average mark of uh, say 56 which is valid because it's between 0 and 100 and we do save student info and we get a message box that says invalid student number so if we change this to uh, 45 which is a valid student number because it's positive and change this to uh, 234 and try and do a save we get an invalid average mark because it's not between 0 and 100 and if we make this valid say make it 36 but we make the date be like a, a, a 6 you know, something that's not a valid date and we need to save student info see we get string was not recognized as a valid date time and this is actually being thrown by the try catch in fact the message has gotten from the exception variable of the try catch so they're actually supplying us with that message but then if we make everything valid make this uh, 3 slash 5 slash 74 so valid everything and we do save infinite student info see it doesn't delete it because we got rid of the delete stuff but it does increment the student record and actually I probably shouldn't have got rid of the delete stuff because we got away with uh, not not saving it anyhow so let's do control E U to uncommon everything out so that'll work right and then do uh, put in the data say that's valid data so we do uh, one Travis McGee uh, one slash one slash 48 and then an average mark of 11 and hit save student info and we see the record goes to one and now if we press the display student info we actually see this record displayed in the uh, uh, text box it looks sort of like a uh, list view but it's really just a text box uh, that's multi-line and to look at the code for how this display student info works let's go back to the IDE and then the IDE if I double click on that button you see uh, once again we have the four local variables and then we have four local string variables as well and the reason for that is we have a uh, for each that goes through uh, each of the records and the student record list of collections which is a list of collections of student info type and that gives us a range variable SI it looks at each looks at each of these members in turn and then it pulls out the student number into the local variable student name local variable date of birth local variable and average mark in the local variable and then we convert these to string and basically we don't have to do any kind of conversion with the name because it's already string but we need to do a two string for the student number and for the date we could use a uh, two string with a D format lowercase d format and that would create a short date but we can also use a two short date string method which in a way is more self documenting and these both produce exactly the same result and then I use a two string to convert the average mark to the local string variable and then I have a string dot format that creates fields that are uh, create nice lined up columns so we have a 15 character column and the first one that's uh, left justified because it's a minus followed by a 35 character column 
that's also left justified and a 15 character column that's left justified and then finally a three character column that's right justified and the first number of all these uh, format strings corresponds to a variable that's after the string so the str student number corresponds to a zero here the l student name corresponds to the one and so on so we'll get a nice formatted string or at least we will as long as the text box is defined the correct way and in order to actually write the line out you notice at the end of the the format string there's a slash in which will put in a new line character so each of these lines will be on its own uh, line and in order to write it to the text box we use a, a text box name dot append text with this uh, formatted line and before we start of course we clear the text box out so we don't keep adding to data that was there before and what I meant by the conditions having to be right for this text box is that for one thing we need to have the word rot set to false so if it goes over we don't create a funny looking line and then we need to have the font set to a monospaced font that each of the characters is exactly the same width so they don't create funny lines based on different character sizes and a good monospaced font is Courier New 12 point and then of course the final characteristic we need is that it's multi-line so we need to set the multi-line to true which then allows us to make this box any size we want since we can put all kinds of lines inside the text box well, rather than wait around for me to type in all this data I created a slideshow of screen captures of what this data looks like and as you can see I just use one two three four as the student ID numbers and then I use the ID numbers as the date so three becomes three three forty eight four becomes four four forty eight and so on and I also use the average mark based on the student number two just to make it simple and verify that the right data is in the right place and you'll probably notice each of these names is actually the name of the of a detective and a detective series but uh, that reflects more me than anything else and then once I put in 10 of these I press the display student info button and we see them nicely formatted in the uh, multi-line text box that shows the data did indeed get put in was all valid and is now displayed to show that it's there well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe